In order to prepare your file for Beast, the first thing you need to use is Beauty. Now in this case, it's asking me about some packages uh, which I need to install because I've got a slightly more advanced version than you will have. I've installed some extra packages for working on more complex models. You probably won't get that. Once you've opened uh, Beauty, the first thing you need to do is import an alignment because Beauty works on alignments. Uh, here I'm just demonstrating the package manager to show that these are the extra packages that I had installed. Uh, I've got some to do with calculating population models. So this allows you to understand an epidemic uh, but we're not going to do any epidemiology models in this particular course. So if I go back to what we actually need, so if I go back to the file menu and go for import alignment, because it works on an alignment. Now here, I'm going to use a file that I aligned previously uh, using faster. Now it's very important when you bring in an alignment that it's got easily identified header information so that you can find the dates of your sequences. That means it needs the correct sort of format. So here's a poorly formatted uh, file. So if you look at the top there where it says CDS, AR16, whatever, you've got the date, which has the 2015-101-17, is mixed in with the ID of that particular sequence. This means that when I ask the program to automatically find the dates from the file, it's not going to be able to do it. So I'm going to end up having to hand edit the dates, which you don't want to do. This is another downloaded file where I've got exactly the same, but this time I've used a vertical divider to divide each of the different fields in the output from the NCBI. So in this case, you can see that the ARI 67056 is clearly divided from the date, which makes it much easier for the program to separate the two different uh, fields from one another. And it makes it much easier to automatically find the dates using beauty. So I'm going to open that particular uh, file, which was a new one that I downloaded from the NCBI and aligned. Press open. Now that goes into the partition section. Now it asks me if it's amino acid because it's got some odd characters which are not just A, C, T and G. But I know that this is coding sequence, so I know that it should be nucleotide and not amino acid. So change it to nucleotide and import it. So that goes in the partition uh, tab. That's You can have more than one sequence alignment if you want to do several different genetic regions that you think might be linked to one another, but that's more complex than we're doing here. Next thing after doing that, I need to work out, as I said, the dates of my sequences. And those are called the tip dates. So if you look there along the tab, just under the file menu, there's tip dates. Click on that and I'm going to use tip dates. So it will show you a list of all the sequences in the file. And I'm going to use auto configure to automatically find the dates for me. And the dates will have a number and that will be a height, which can either be related to some time in the past or related to the most recent sequence. So the most recent sequence can be zero or some defined sequence in the past can be zero using a regular expression which has these slashes and it's going to look at year, then month, then day. That's the particular date format that I'm using. So it's found all those dates, it's found all those particular years and you can see it's calculated their height. So in this case, zero is the most recent sequence and it's working backwards. So the higher the number, the further it is back in time. Uh, that's one way of visualizing your set of data. So you need to go through and check there's no weird ones like 999. Uh, you could have it the other way around. So the most recent sequences have high numbers and the origin, the first sequence is counted as zero. Doesn't make any particular difference. Uh, the models will be calculated correctly. The trees will be the uh, same either way. It's just where your zero on the graph is will be different.
makes no difference to the actual output of the calculation. Once you're happy that you've got all the tip dates right, then you can go on to building the actual model uh, and configuring beauty uh, to set up your beast's job and set up the calculations. So the next thing you need to do is called the site model. Now you need gamma site model because this is coding nucleotide and we want the gamma correction for the three different codon positions. Now by default it tries to do the Duke's Cantor model. Now we don't want really to do Duke's Cantor, we want to have something a bit more sophisticated because Duke's Cantor is not realistic. So here you've got a choice of HKY, uh, Tamura Ni, and GTR, which is the general time reversible model. JC, Duke's Cantor, only has one uh, parameter in it that you set because it's the same rate between all the different things. If you pick Tamura Ni, you've got two parameter model. So they're called parameters are called Kappa 1 and uh, Kappa 2. Uh, leave them as the default because the program will automatically find these. If you knew something about the distributions of purines and pyrimidines within your sequences, you could set it. After that, you need to pick the clock model. The simplest is the strict clock, which is assumed the same rate across all the different branches of your tree. You can have more complicated models if you want to. Uh, leave the default clock rate to be one you have no idea what this is going to be before you start the calculations and the calculations will actually work out the clock rate for you. So don't worry about it. Alternative clocks are exponential, uh, log normal and a local a randomized local clock. So one randomizes the speed along each one of the branches. One of them it creates a normal distribution of rates across the branches and the other one it uses an exponential distribution across the branches. You don't really need to worry about this, let's stick with it just being strict. Now the next thing is called priors and this is the actual statistical model. Now by default it goes to something called a Yule model. You don't really need to know about this, it's just a simple what we call birth and death model. So sequences, new sequences appear, new sequences disappear, and you have a population of viruses where they're appearing and disappearing. It's not very realistic, so we're going to use something called the coalescent. So the coalescent model comes in different forms. You probably won't have a choice of these four. I've got them because I've got more modules enabled than you will have. You'll probably just have constant population and exponential population. Now the way a virus works, you've got lots and lots of virus in each one of your cells and it's reproducing a lot. So if you look at the viral population within an individual, it's quite large compared to the human population in the world that's infected, which is going to be smaller. So you can treat it roughly as a constant population rather than an exponentially growing population. For virus that makes sense, you could build it to an exponential population that makes your model slightly more complicated and that can have some knock-on effects as to whether your model is successful or not. So I would advise keep things simple when at all possible. So you pick the coalescent constant population. It's got all these different parameters there. Don't worry about them. The next thing you need to do is pick how long you're going to run the simulation for comes as a default, I think that's 10 million iterations. Uh, I know, because I've run this calculation before, that that doesn't turn out to be enough for this particular model. So I'm going to increase that by a factor of 10. So I'm going to make it 10 times longer. This is going to take a couple of hours to run. I also need to change the trace log, because otherwise it will be recording every 1,000 steps onto your computer the result and that will end up with a very very large output file that you'll find it very difficult to analyze so increase that by tenfold as well and when you're doing that you also want to increase the screen log so how often it publishes something to the screen saying it's done a calculation by tenfold because otherwise you'll see lots of things flying past you on the screen and you don't really want that uh, you want it only to update you as often as you need. So put that up by 10 
and particularly you need to do this for the tree log because otherwise you will end up with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trees and you don't want that because the analysis steps become impossible uh, when you take that sort of approach. Uh, once you've done that then you can actually leave the program. So if you type on exit, it'll say, do you want to save the specification? And yes, you do before you leave. So pick the same file name as you use for the alignment. Then just change the suffix from .fas to .xml. So the XML file is going to be the input file that will be read into Beast. Beauty is the thing that sets up all of the calculation. This is the complicated part, the part where there's lots of different variables and lots of different things that you can choose, lots of different options to choose between as there are in tree programs. Running Beast itself is an awful lot easier than running Beauty. 